All right, going live on video, stand by for audio. And we are live. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Live the Fuel show. So today, after many reschedulings to get this gentleman on the show, I am so excited to bring this latest podcast to you. Uh, this gentleman has a heck of a history. Uh, I actually, if you heard on this uh, recent uh, past episodes, recently in November 2017, I made my own trip down to South Africa. And uh, this gentleman airs from down there. He's studied at the University of Cape Town. He's obtained, uh, he's obtaining MBCHB. I, I'm going to let him get into that because I don't know what all that is. But he's an MD. He's a DSC. He's really focused in the exercise science space. I want to geek out about that a lot. We talk a lot about health and fitness on the show. He's an emeritus professor at UCT. So following his re retirement from research unit of exercise science and sports medicine in 95, the year I graduated high school, mind you, he was a co-founder of the now prestigious Sports Science Institute of South Africa. So this gentleman's got a lot of background. He's been pretty viral in the past couple of years. I can at least back that up on Stitcher, on, on, on Twitter, and all these different apps out there because he has published more than 750 scientific books and articles. He's been cited more than 16,000 times in scientific literature and has an H index of 71. He has won numerous awards over the years. He's been out there in the news due to some court stuff, which we're gonna really dig into about today. So without further ado, the founder of the Noakes Foundation, Professor Tim Noakes, welcome to the show, sir. Scott, it's a privilege to be on it. Thank you so much for having me. I had to really like go in and highlight what I wanted to bring up. You have so much. <laughs> I was like, hey, I, <laughs> well, I've been I'm around. I need to drink, drink some coffee just to keep up with your bio. <laughs> I've been along, around a long time, you know. <laughs> so, I, think, I think you've done a few things over the years. Yeah, no, I've had a good career. Thank you. Well, and uh, I don't know if you remember, let's see. So Megan on your team, she originally tried to get you booked in February. We had a couple of reschedulings. I love the fact that we actually had to reschedule because you cared about life balance and your wife. I love that. And, but then <laughs> as I hinted in the bio, I tried actually trying to time our schedules when I was in South Africa for two weeks too. And you're just a busy guy. So I, I literally flew over there with my portable podcast gear just in case if I was able to lock that down. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm sorry it didn't work out. Uh, you know, you, you've done a lot, you know a lot. I figure your schedule's probably pretty busy. So thank you for freeing up your time for our show today and our listeners because you have a lot of powerful knowledge to share. And I am really, really excited to have you on. It's, it's an thank honor. You. Thank you very much. So you, you've been on a, a, a friend of mine's podcast many times. Shout out to Vinny Tortorich. That's why I'm rocking his, you know, eggs and bacon t-shirt today for the video feed. And we, we've, we've all been trying to come together in the health and fitness space to increase yeah. as much positive exposure around where you come from, what you have accomplished, and also what you've gone through lately. So yeah. where are you at, my friend? I mean, where is this, <laughs> this the, the, the courts process, the, the news? I mean, are you in the free and clear now? I mean, yeah. and maybe we should catch our listeners up. I mean, Professor Tim Noakes has been in and out of the courts. Uh, why don't you give a, a brief synopsis of this adventure that you've gone through? Sure. So I think we have to go back to my former life as an exercise physiologist, exercise scientist. I never practiced medicine in any detailed way. I was always much more interested in the science. And I became really interested in sports medicine from the preventive health science. And I graduated as a doctor without knowing how to treat one condition, not one medical condition. I completely fooled the examiners. <laughs> so, wow. Because I, I, I couldn't learn the pharmacology, the drugs. It didn't seem to me that drugs were appropriate. So I went into research and wrote the famous book, The Law of Running, in which states that you must eat carbohydrates all the day, every day, as much as you possibly can to make you healthy and run faster. And then I discovered that all that advice had done for me was to give me type 2 diabetes despite running all these marathons. So I decided that I, when I saw the truth, and the truth came in a book from Vinick, Foley and Westman, the new Atkins for the new you. And I read that and within two hours I said, oh my gosh, I got it completely wrong. So then I said, well, I'd have to change because I've written this book 
And that book has influenced millions, well, let's say thousands or hundreds of thousands of people around the world. And I know that that's going to make them unhealthy and they're going to get sick. And so, Scott, I'm going to have to go now for a second because my wife's just arrived at the front door. I love so this. Can you hold a second. Yes. See, ladies, and I'm going to fill in here. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. again, it goes back to life balance. Uh, so when we tried getting Tim on the show before, I have to help you guys understand this. I'm on the East Coast here in the USA. Tim is literally recording live with us from South Africa. So it's really fun to try and play, play across multiple time zones. So right now I'm recording for you guys here at 8 o'clock in the morning just to meet his schedule. And I think it's like 3 p.m. his time. And a few weeks ago, we tried getting him on, but uh, it was his wife's birthday. And I said, he goes, I apologize. My assistant got, up, you know, our schedule's mixed up. And I said, Tim, please, this is about life balance, man. This is your wife. It's your birthday. Like, please take the day. We'll reschedule. Um, so h- how is the belated birthday girl? No, she's very well. She's very excited because she's an a, a artist. She's a botanical artist. Wow. And she's had her painting accepted for a major exhibition in Johannesburg for all world people about in its botanical art. And I love it. Taken, she's just taken the painting to be sent up to Johannesburg, which is about 2000 kilometers from here. Well, and I was there too on my second week. So yes, that's right. Yeah. We had, so, I had, so, I had the pleasure of doing Cape town the first week and then Johannes is, is it pronounced Johannesburg? That's or, right. There we go. So I'm trying to remember everything. <laughs> so that's exciting. She's, she's never uh, gotten her art into a gallery no, before. If this was, this was, it's a special one because it's a global, it's a global one with uh, artists from all around the world uh, ex- exhibiting their paintings. Well, so I, lo- really I love that we're hearing this because now granted this won't air for about a week or two, but uh, I like to keep my stuff within two weeks. So it's current. Um, but we, you know, we just passed through earth day. So yes. it's exciting to see all this positive energy. So is this something that she wanted to do to reflect on the planet or? Yes, we, she's a great gardener and we bought this property many years ago and she, we built the garden and it was on her design. So she planned the garden and it's really matured and it's really beautiful. And as you'll know, Cape Town is one of the floral kingdoms of the world. It's the smallest floral kingdom. To be a floral kingdom, you have to have so much diversity of plants. And the plant diversity here is because the soil is very poor and we have frequent fires. So that caused evolutionary diversity amongst the plants. And so she, is a, she grows bulbs, the local plant from bulbs, and then paints them. So that's, and she's, she's exquisitely talented in that way. Wow, that's amazing. I love the fact that she just is turning beauty out of, you kind of hinted there about the soil is poor. And do you actually say that you guys actually uh, suffer from a lot of wildfires over there? That's right. And, and, the, and the plants have adopted to the fire. Well, and I, by I the way, that. it's about to start raining in about 10 minutes and we are in the worst drought we've ever had. I was going to say, because I was there and wow. as soon as I came through the airport, they had it all over the digital screens. Please be mindful of water consumption. You guys have been in a drought for a couple of years. Yeah, exactly. For three, four years now. Well, the serious rain's about to start for the first time this year. So let's hope that. I am so excited break. for you guys. We've been, mon- ever since we went there, we've been monitoring it because we felt so bad. We were down there for my, uh, well, week one was the fun week in Cape Town, but then week two, we went to Johannesburg and then uh, took our shuttle service out to, to a uh, safari lodge because my fiance was there. She's a doctor of equine. Uh, medicine. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So we were there for a horse conference with all these horse doctors from all over the world. And uh, again, just, just two areas of Africa I've never been to. And I just thought it was beautiful, but I, I did take your drought very, very seriously. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm glad to hear you guys are finally getting some rain because that's just scary over there. Because again, quick piece on me, I used to fight wildfires with the federal government yeah. here. Yeah. So I take fire very seriously. And yeah. it's, I, I just love the connection on all this. <laughs> That's right. We did, we've had two fires on the mountain that we look at in the last two weeks. And so, and the one was put out by the first rains we had last week. So, oh, all right. I'm going to let my fiance know later today that uh, you guys are finally getting rain. We're so excited. And you know, what's interesting is that you take water for granted and we've had to cut back on what we do. So we haven't been able to water our plants for a year and bathing. You can only have a little tiny bit in the bath or you have a very short, short shower. But you soon adapt to it, unless you feel guilty when you, when you use a lot of water. So it makes people aware, really made us aware of 
of how important water is in our lives. I mean, it's one of the basic fundamentals we need. And yeah, I think, especially here in the North America and, and the US, I mean, I think we take a lot of that for, I mean, we go through yeah. some occasional droughts here, but not to that severity. And we need yeah, to take sure. so, these simplicities much more seriously in life. Sure, sure. Well, let's get back into it, man. So uh, you're about to get into a little bit more of that history and, and obviously your, your own kind of lessons learned <laughs> from, <laughs> you, you actually turned yourself into a type two diabetic wrote a Correct. book about it, and then realized, oops, I might have gotten that messed up. Yeah, that's correct. So then I decided I've got to change, and so I've got to try and make up for my error. And I might just make the point that my dad died from type 2 diabetes with all the complications, treated the conventional way. And so there was a little guilt there because I'd been involved not treating him. I wasn't his treating doctor, but if I knew today what I know if I'd known what I know today, when he was sick, we could have saved him, but I didn't know that. And so he died this really sad, terrible death. So, so anyway, I realized I had to do something about it. And for a year, I was too scared to do anything. And then I wrote a chapter in my autobiography. I revised my autobiography and added the new chapter on the story of what had happened. And that immediately irritated the cardiologists in Cape Town, who started writing stories to the Cape the newspapers complaining that I was saying things that were completely contrary to what everyone else was saying. And I was conflicting with the American Heart Association, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Believe me, our so, AHA does that, not know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> correct. So that started a big battle. But what really happened in 2013 was a year later, we wrote a book called The Real Meal Revolution. And I was one of four authors. And all I did, I, was read, I wrote the science about it, but I didn't write the recipes and all the story. And when that came out, that completely changed the dy dynamics of dietetics advice in South Africa, because it became the single most important topic of conversation across South Africa. And people then went to the dietitians and said, well, Dr. Noak says we should eat fat. And you say we shouldn't, but I've eaten the fat and I've lost weight and I'm feeling much healthier. Why don't you people incorporate this into, into your dietary advice? And the dietitians couldn't answer. Hmm. So they decided they had to take me out. And we have absolute evidence for this, that they colluded with the Health Professional Council of South Africa, which, to which I'm registered because I'm a medical doctor. Although I don't practice medicine, I kept my registration for a number of reasons that are not, not relevant. Hmm. So, so they, the, the Health Professional Council came up with a plan, a plan for NOAKS. <laughs> and a few days later, after they decided that they were going to do something with me, I tweeted something, and the head of the Dietetics Association of South Africa reported me for expressing an opinion. That's essentially what it was. And over the next year, the Health Professional Council decided whether they're going to charge me or not. They went back and forth. They elicited a whole bunch of information from various ex so-called experts. <laughs> And they decided to charge me without ever consulting me. I couldn't give them, respond to all the information they'd collected. And that's completely against the law. The law in any country is that if you have a case against someone, you have to show them all the evidence. They never that did sense. that. Yeah, they never did that. And seven senior colleagues and lawyers decided to charge me. And the charge was completely spurious, and we've, we've shown it was malicious. It was a malicious prosecution. So we had a choice. My wife and I had a choice. We could back off and say, listen, I'm wrong, blah, blah, blah. And what, because what they wanted to do was to silence me. They didn't want my opinion out there in the media or on Twitter. And we decided, no, that's, that would be the end of my career, as all my scientific background of which you spoke about would be lost. I'd be remembered as this madman who changed his mind, et cetera. That's, that's scary. Yeah. So we decided whatever the cost, we're going to go for it. And fortunately, we have, we got two of the best lawyers in South Africa. One, Dr. Rocky Ramdas, who's a great friend of mine. And I'd helped him in a few cases. And he came along and then senior counsel, Mike van der Nest, who's one of the, honestly, one of the leading lawyers in South Africa. And they were so unhappy that my freedom of speech was being tampered with that they gave their time for free. Wow. And that would have been about a million dollars worth of law in, at minimum, a million dollars. Now, I could never have afforded a million dollars. I could never have fought this case if they hadn't given their time to me for free. 
So we went over 28 days. And at the end of the first 25 days, I won 10-0. 10, zero. Ten rulings were that I won and nought did I lose. Then the Health Professional Council appealed the decision. They appealed the, a decision of their own committee. They formed a new committee. Because they don't want to lose. Exactly. And they, it was too embarrassing for them. So they've, uh, we then went through an appeal in February. We were promised the outcome in March. It's now the end of April. We still haven't had the outcome. So we don't know what the final decision is. So we're sitting on tenterhooks and, uh, well, we'll just see what happens. We it's, hope it's the end because if it's not the end, we will take it further. It, it, it truly is mind boggling um, how a lot of this stuff goes down. Mm. And mm. the thing that's frustrating is the same thing has happened. I'm blanking on his name right now, but Vinny's had him on his show as well. Uh, and again, shout out to Vinny, Fitness Confidential. Uh, but uh, it was a Very doctor. In, in Australia. Yes, yes. Tasmania, yeah. right? No, he's a friend, yes. great friend of mine. Yeah. Yeah. So he's gone through the same BS that you've gone through. Yeah, correct. <laughs> and it's exactly it's, it's, correct. It's unfortunate because, see, here's the thing. If this was happening in the engineering or the architectural space, right? Yeah. People see something new and different. And it's like, oh my God, look what they've created, right? You're a creator, you're a designer. I, when I originally went to the university, I was studying engineering before I went into marketing and everything else. But like, I looked at that as a creator, somebody who's building something anew. And usually everybody praises that unless something goes wrong. In this case, you're kind of not even rebuilding something new. You're actually going back in time to the where, where we came from and saying, hey, maybe we should just go back to the way we were eating before. <laughs> I'm not, even, even I was wrong, right? You admitted your own fault. So yeah. no, this, exactly right. this whole case has been so frustrating for health nuts like myself too. And obviously, Vinny's a big guy in your corner. And I just can't believe that they put you guys through this stuff. Because you're just trying to help people get healthy. Exactly. And, and what I can't understand is that you just have to look around you. And I mean, in South Africa, it's as, worse, it's as bad as in the United States. You've got all these obese, unhealthy people who look unhappy. And they're dragging around these unfit bodies. Hmm. And you wonder what it must be like to be in that person's shoes. It well, must be a struggle all day, every day. And no one is addressing it. Is that what inspired you to write The Real Meal Revolution? Was that like, not besides everything you already gave us, but I mean, was that just like, oh my God, guys, let's just get back to the basics. I'm actually going to cycle in a little screen sharing here too. So um, your first edition was actually a red covered book and I didn't even realize you had a 2.0. So, yes. so 2.0, I, I, when did 2.0 come out? Okay, I didn't write the 2.0. That was uh, John O. Oh. Proudfoot wrote that okay. one. All right. But the, the Real Meal Revolution was his idea. Oh. And uh, he just included me because he wanted someone to write the science. In fact, he didn't even want the science. He just wanted me to write an introduction. And then I said, why don't I write a bit more? Because I was ready to write the science at that time. Okay. I wrote this uh, 25,000 words on the science. And it just came out in three weeks. I wrote all of it down. And uh, that caused all the problems. Wow, sounds like you just did a giant mind dump. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I mean, it's impressive because I mean, in only a few weeks you can write an entire book. That's usually a sign that there's something really, really important you've been trying to get out. And it, yeah. just, it just flowed. That's right. And, and we had to do it because we wanted it out by December and we had a very short time frame to do it. And I might just add that that book became one of the greatest sellers in the history of South Africa <laughs> because in South Africa... We've only got 250,000 book buyers and we sold 250,000 copies. So everyone who reads a book <laughs> in South Africa bought it. It's either that or it was just so mind-blowing. People were also just probably picking up a couple boxes of them saying, okay, yeah. pass them out, pass them out. I mean, yeah. wow. And that's an, that's an impressive comparison real quick on the market differences, right? Because uh, you've got 250,000 book buyers. We probably yes. have that in like one city. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, exactly. It's, exactly. That's impressive to the level of pen market penetration that you were able to create off of something as simple as, hey, man, I just want you guys to look at what a real meal looks like. Okay. Just yeah. let's get back to the basics, right? It's sustainable approach to healthy eating. It's not, and I love the little uh, age of legends. Was that uh, some of his verbiage or was that some of your verbiage you threw out there? No, I think that was John A's, but yeah. Okay. But you know, the, 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 the the genius in that book is the one page, and that's the green list of what you should eat. Mm -hmm. 
And that was Sally Creed, the, another of the co-authors, and she came up with the green, the yellow, and green, orange, and red lists. Okay. And, and there it is. You just have to follow the green list. Now, the irony is that the green list is what the South African dietary guidelines say you should wean a child onto. That's the green list. Okay. But when I said you should wean onto a green list, then suddenly I was charged with, with malpractice and so on. So, so I have to ask, did they ever confirm or make an official statement on the whole tweet thing? Like the, Cause that was totally a setup. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and yeah. say, I know Vinny already said it. It's like, come on. That was, that's <laughs> set up. Like that, that was just crazy. Did they ever take a position officially on that? Well, they just said that it was, uh, it was unconventional because it wasn't evidence-based. But hmm. So when we went to trial, we had 12 days of testimony. I gave nine days of testimony, including three and a half days of cross-examination. Wow. And then Zoe Harcom and, and Nina Teicheld and Karen Zinn came out from all over the world. And they spoke for another three days, of which there was also cross-examination for about a day. So we put together 12 days of testimony in the prosecution produced one scientific paper, one scientific paper, which we, believe, we have shown is probably fraudulent and in fact proves that the low carb diet outperformed the low fat diet. But that's all, we're still in debate, but it was quite astonishing how, how it happened. And then during the trial, we showed that there were other forces behind it all. It wasn't just the health professionals council, there were commercial interests involved as well. Oh, let's be real. I mean, this, you don't have to be in the U S of a to, uh, talk about, uh, corporate influence. It, it exists worldwide. This is, this isn't anything new. If yeah. this is going to impact somebody's bottom line and they have the money to yeah. battle that they're going to step up and do something. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And if I can, you know, the other book that you haven't discussed is, is Ooh, waterlogged. waterlogged. Yeah. And, and this you, is for real quick for I our listeners. This, you, I, I was showing the noakesfoundation.org. Do we have all the books on the foundation or no? I don't think waterlogged would be there because it's kind of not related to, okay. to nutrition, but, but this, this shows how the sports drink industry manipulated science to promote their sales. Ooh. And I have a very strong belief that somewhere behind this whole trial is someone's anger at that book. And what it meant. <laughs> okay. As a health and fitness nut, I mean, before I put on Vinny's t-shirt, I was wearing my Spartan racing t-shirt because I do a lot of obstacle course racing. Yes. I was a ski race coach for 11 years. I, I was teaching spinning in, in gyms for six years. I, I've done a lot of health and fitness. So I, I've observed the sports drink market. <laughs> it is not a small market. Actually, real quick, I'm going to share again for ladies and gentlemen. Again, besides his main, the Noakes Foundation uh, website, there it is, waterlogged the serious problem of overhydration in endurance sports and what athletes really need to drink to train and perform their best. Uh, when was this one released? In 2012, I believe. 2011 or 2012. Yeah, 2012, I think. Okay. And so, in fact, I mean, it was... And that hasn't changed the, much. <laughs> <laughs> it's... Well, you know, we just had the London Marathon and they... Sorry, two things happened recently. The London Marathon was on Sunday and the organization said you drink to thirst. Now, that's the first time that the London Marathon has ever said that because that's what you should do. Mm -hmm. And the medical director said that over drinking is the biggest risk to the athletes during the day. And that's amazing. And then Wait, the US what? military, for the first time in history, after 35 years of trying to get them to realize it, they said in future... When someone collapses in the military, you're not allowed to give them intravenous fluids until you've measured the sodium with an iced at machine. And I mean, that's astonishing because that's what that book is all about. And we were saying that in 1985. And that's interesting. To 1985 till today. So in 2010, 2011, that's when I, our listeners are, our regular listeners already know the story, but I, I left the corporate world and then became a, a, one of the elite hotshot wild and firefighters. So it's only like 100 hotshot crews in our nation. Very yes. specialized, very militarized. Um, and we went over the importance because we were doing 16 hour shifts on the yeah. fire line, hiking in the mountains, chainsaw on my shoulder, 40, 50 pounds of gear on your back. Like your life is in the woods yeah. <laughs> fighting wildfire. <laughs> And one of the biggest things we talked about was the health, right? The hydration, cell, uh, salt and electrolytic balance, 
Um, we even in our, cause we have to be CPR trained and first aid trained, basic CPR for first aid training. They, they were discussing with us uh, for outdoor survival, how you observe whether or not you've been actually over hydrated. I forget the official yeah. term. Uh, maybe, yeah. you know, hyponatremia. There it is. So yeah. it. <laughs> you, you say that. <laughs> so I get it. I've run marathons. I've run half marathons. I, I'm an endurance athlete. So <laughs> why does it take a book? <laughs> <laughs> well, it takes a book because industry was trying to present some other story. The, what industry decided, and I'm not going to mention a particular company. I don't want to be sued. Tonight. Oh, no. No, yeah, you've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So in 1996, what that company managed to do through its influence of scientists and the American College of Sports Medicine was to get the ACSM to produce drinking guidelines said you must drink out of thirst. And they, what they were saying was that if you drop one drop of sweat and you don't replace it, immediately you'll die of heat stroke. And that's the message they got out there. And so why did they do that? Because they knew that selling their product to marathon runners wasn't the, wasn't the market. The market is the gym goer. So the gym goer who goes and does 15 minutes of gym has got to drink a liter of sports drink to get through that 15 minutes of exercise. And that's, that's the marketing. Yep. And so, you know, I, I just laugh when I run here and I see people carrying their water bottles and, you know, they're too fat to be able to run more than 5Ks. And you just think, you know, how did they get this completely brainwashed and completely wrong? Well, I mean, I'm sure you could tell behind me, I've got the, the bike art on the wall and I've got a, a bike chain clock and I, I'm, I'm a big cyclist. So, Great. I mean, I do, I don't know what it is in kilometers. I do, you know, hundred mile charity rides for, you know, raising money for charities every year. So I do a lot of biking and yeah. the same thing. I see somebody show up and they've got a $6,000 US uh, dollars, uh, you know, titanium Ooh. framed road bike. And then they're parking a 300 pound body on it or a 250 pound body on it. And I'm like, guys, like you can invest in all the gear you want. Same thing with like you saying runners, they put the, the waist belt on, they got all the bottles and the gel bottles. And I'm like, <laughs> it's, you're on a never ending sugar train of yeah. sports, yeah. sports drinks and gels. You're, it's it. like, it's, it's like watching a human roller coaster during these events, just and again, yeah. let's be real. I didn't know any better years ago. I actually used to try those gels because all the marathons you're running along and that's what they have on the table. I, I didn't know anything different until I became self-educated and found influencers like you to help teach me what that is a problem. <laughs> well, let me own up again and put my hand up. You know, we designed the first gels in the world. We're designed in Oh, come on, Tim. Really? <laughs> oh. And they even carried my name. <laughs> now, so, I'm sure that gel was probably a little bit better back then. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Sure. I mean, now I don't know what's in these gels. I don't yeah. want to know. They're so manufactured. It's terrible. Yeah. Um, no, exactly. Well, the, I must tell you, the first ones exploded because the, <laughs> because the, the glucose, the bacteria, there were bacteria in them and the, they ate the glucose and exploded. <laughs> oh, Oh, you guys, try, you guys try to keep the healthy uh, bacteria still in there? Exactly, exactly. And now, of course, they'd be sterilized and so on, or added something that kills off the bacteria. But we had some, some exciting moments. <laughs> that's, that's funny because the one nutrition company I use, I had on this, he's like, he calls himself the researcher of researchers. So mm. all, this, all the doctors and the scientists who, work, who developed some of the nutrition that I use, he studied all their work. And then uh, on the podcast, I just aired him actually on Friday, and he discussed how there was a doctor doing stage four cancer research, doing a lot of st uh, studying it to, uh, you know, ketogenic lifestyle, yeah. you know, yeah. state of ketosis, stage four research in, in uh, Switzerland and Germany. And this guy decided to take all the meal shakes that are out there. And I know, you know, Vinny, for example, he's very anti-protein shakes, stuff like that. So he took all these protein shakes and he tested them all. And uh, specifically meal shakes, not like just straight protein. Like these have to have all you know, the fats and everything else in there to align it properly. And he found that a couple of these uh, shakes, not energy drinks, <laughs> um, <laughs> the ones that were processed in a uh, undenatured way. So there's 
you can process things in a, I'm not a lab guy, you probably know what I'm talking about. There's denatured and undenatured. And the undenaturing process is rare in the shake market because yeah. it takes longer and it costs a little bit more, but it keeps the natural enzymes and all the healthy stuff in there. So long story short, if I make a shake, one of those shakes, and I let it sit for a little while, you see it kind of expanding a little bit. That's why they tell you to drink it really, really less. Well, he just yeah. taught me the other night. He's like, well, we just figured out two years ago, this guy decided to do that research on all these shakes. And he said, those healthy bacteria and the enzymes and everything else that are still alive, he's like, here's what we, he did. He took 100 degree Fahrenheit water, so not boiling, and then put the shake in that. And I'm like, whoa, 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 you don't do that with hot water. He's like, hold on. And then he tracked it for 40 to 45 minutes. And then he went back and then te tested it. The casein, which is not really a good source of protein, yeah. um, it's really kind of like a byproduct. It's crap, yeah. which a lot of people have a problem processing, was gone. He said yeah. the natural enzymes broke down the casein. And then they did further research. Apparently, they found like 300 new uh, neuro like beneficial things coming out of that process. So it's so cool to hear, you know, how bacteria and natural enzymes help convert things. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> even in a gel, even in a gel. <laughs> so clear, so clearly your first product, well, which you don't recommend anymore. Um, no, it's called, it was called, let me tell you, it's called Lepin FRN. Wow. And then Fordyce, Rose and Noakes. Those are the three names, the three of us who were the athletes who helped develop it. Bruce but, Fordyce. But it, now, was there a lot of sugar in that? Because it was a gel? Oh, it was 100%, 100% sugar. It was, it was a long chain glucose polymer. Oh, wow. And then that was, we thought it was absorbed a bit more quickly than the other things, but it wasn't. In the end, it's all the same. So as that goes back to kind of like a casual way that like Vinny says it too. Uh, again, Vinny's getting plugged on the show like crazy today, but we, you know, you and I both know him so well, but it's like, he calls it the sugar train once in a while. I call it the sugar roller coaster, but yeah. your liver doesn't know the difference. I think this is important for our listeners to hear this today is we've hit on a couple of other areas that you don't normally talk about. I've heard in some of your podcasts, you've been on like waterlogged and everything else, which is important, but it all comes back to is like what we're putting in our body. And I was just commenting to somebody on Facebook literally last night. They were like, Hey, what yogurt, you know, do you recommend? Mm -hmm. And I was like, the full, more full fat, the better, right? Cause it's so hard to find that. And they're like, yeah. well, uh, and then I said, I, I mean, I'm all about, again, bacon, eggs, fat. I'm fat adapted. And they said, oh, you don't put fruit in your yogurt. And I said, well, maybe you want to. Yeah. I'm, I'm two years into hardcore fat adaptation, yeah. five years into removing grains out of my life. So I'm further down the timeline than most people. Um, yeah. So maybe you could speak to that. Maybe you could speak to this to our listeners and why I'm such a nutball about this. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, one of my staff now we is he's realized that if you're fat adapted, your metabolism is totally different than if you're carbohydrate adapted, and no one has recognized that as yet. That your response to carbohydrate becomes totally different if you're fat adapted or carbohydrate adapted. And all the metabolism in the textbooks in med that we teach in medical school is based on carbohydrate metabolism in people who are carbohydrate adapted. No one has investigated fat adapted athletes. And the key is the differences are so dramatic that once you understand them, you would never want to be carbohydrate adapted. So what he's showing, and I'm not going to give it all away because someone will go and steal our thunder. <laughs> no, no, no. We want, to we want to protect you and everything we can to yeah, help your foundation. That's right. So what, what he's showing is that if you're carbohydrate adapted and you take in carbohydrates, we, everyone knows that you immediately burn the carbohydrates. You have to store them and burn them immediately. And so then you, and that puts you on this roller coaster because now you've got to eat more carbohydrates to fill up the stores. And when you're exercising, you become so dependent on carbohydrates. And what I can tell you is that, that it, we've studied people now, and Jeff Ehrlich has, of course, done, he was the first to do this with Steve Finney. But we've shown people can burn 1.8 grams of fat a minute, which is enormous. You can run a 220 marathon burning 1.8 grams of fat a minute. So people come and tell me, you know, you can't run a 220 marathon burning fat. That's nonsense. You can. So if you're fat, but, but if you're carbohydrate adapted, you burn 0.5 or 0.6 grams a minute. And then all of a sudden you reach the 20, 20 miles in the marathon and you're that, that, 
50 gram, or sorry, that 0.5 of a gram of fat per minute isn't enough to keep you going. And you run out of carbohydrates, you can't burn fat. So what happens? You, you slow down and you feel terrible. And, Hold you on, start Doc. To, and you start to worry that you're not going to finish the race. So, so yeah. I've been trying to explain this because I'm, I'm trying, I, I'm not perfect at this yet. Yeah. I'm still, I mean, I, I, so last year I did my first metric century road biking event for charity. Uh, it was for uh, colon cancer. And uh, it's actually called Tour de Touche. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's great because we have we have a we have a a velodrome here. I live in yeah. Allentown, Pennsylvania, an hour north of Philadelphia, and we have one of those rare cycling, you know, concrete. Yeah, uh, we have a velodrome here, yeah. so we there's a, it's a huge cycling community. So I yeah. love it. And <laughs> that was the first event where I said, okay. I'm going to figure out this fat adaptation thing. So I had my old uh, plastic goo containers. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and I filled it with, uh, with Villa Capelli olive oil. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. You know, fat adapt, because I'm already fat adapt. I want to see if I need, and it, it, was, it was hard. I, it was my first time doing a big, big endurance event based on trying to fuel off of fats. And obviously you hit all the rest areas and all they have is water and like, you know, peanut butter, banana sandwiches on bread. And I'm like, I'm going to stick with my, you know, my olive oil shots. So <laughs> I wasn't the best performing athlete next to my buddies because they were on the sugar train. And I think yeah. that was just me just trying to find my path. So yeah. I'm still on the right track though, right? Absolutely. Okay. All right. So you, you absolutely are. And, but, the, but you only start to show the benefit after three hours or so. That's when your benefit will really come through. Mm. and they've, they've been dependent on all the carbs, and they've got to keep eating the carbs after three hours, whereas you're just burning fat. Well, and that's, that's so, where they're like, well, you, you can't, you need to have your, uh, what's, what, what are, uh, a friend of mine who's a scientist, she uh, does it for the pharmaceutical companies, but she's trying, they're trying to cure disease. Uh, she's a good person. Uh, <laughs> uh, she says, she's like, it's impossible. She's like, the human yeah. body has to have sugar. I forget for what process. Maybe she, yeah. maybe you know what she's talking about. Um, but she's like, the body has to have sugar. She's like, or else we would die. How do you how do you respond to people like that? No, she's absolutely right. But you you don't have to take it not externally. You've got this wonderful liver. Because mm. what would have happened if that was the case? We would have been wiped out when there was no carbohydrate around. How right, could like, we like winter time in the caveman times, right? Yeah, exactly. How you'd have survived in Philadelphia in the winter. Um. 10,000 years ago without the ability to have a liver that produces all the glucose that you need. And here I'm with type two diabetes and I've got a liver that's overproducing glucose. Mm. And that's the problem for 50% of Americans. They've got livers that are overproducing carbohydrates. They don't need more carbohydrates. So, but let me just tell you, I'm, you know, I've converted to, to gym work as well as I continue to run, but I'm doing much more gym work. And I've just come from a workout and I had, it's very explosive training and I, I do stuff that is really as hard as I can go for 30 seconds. And my performance is going up, not eating carbohydrates. They're not going down. Mm. They're going up. I don't need the carbohydrates. Or if I do need them, I'm storing them every day because uh, my liver's producing enough glucose. It's storing them in my muscles. And when I do these workouts, I'm fine. Interesting. But I think that I'm just adapting and I, you burn fat at high rates and you can do these high intensity exercises. And One again, the, for our listeners, you're 68 years old. Let's, let's clarify yeah. that, right? Yeah, correct. <laughs> and you're in the gym. I, I love hearing yeah. this. <laughs> and I've just put on, I might tell you, I've just put on five kilograms of muscle in my upper body because. Wait, I hold on. The aging population can put muscle on? Exactly. But only if you're eating a high fat moderate protein diet and you're doing explosive exercise mm. i mean my, my upper body looks as good as it did when i was an oarsman in the in, when i was 21 22 oh, i'm so the wife is very happy <laughs> yeah it is it's but i you know i couldn't believe it because i also believed that story interesting we, we're raised in the idea that as you get older you lose your muscle mass but you don't have to i mean it's astonishing that you don't have to i've lost some in the leg in my calves that's I've lost some muscle mass there, but not in the rest, anywhere in the rest of my body. I'm as muscular as I was when I was 20. And now you're still doing endurance training too? Or are you still, because you're, you're yeah. a runner, you're a big runner. That's right. I'm still running and uh, I'm, 
so what happened when I started the, the CrossFit and my running's gone down because I was so working so hard in the gym and so I was so sore. <laughs> I was with uh, post my post exercise muscle soreness that for one or two days sometimes I couldn't train. But now I'm now I'm strong enough to do the gym work, not get sore, and so I can start training properly again. Did I hear you drop in a little keyword there? Are you, you said you're doing some CrossFit style training. Yeah, no, I must admit I'm, I'm absolutely committed. I, someone said the other day that how do you know someone does CrossFit? Well, they tell you in one minute. <laughs> when they meet you within a minute. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, truth be told, I'm a CFL1. I'm a CrossFit certified trainer. So um, Fantastic. I've been, Fantastic. Uh, the, I can actually, I didn't know what the heck CrossFit was until yeah. I left to go do the firefighting. Yeah. I, showed up, I showed up on a base. Yeah. Right, we had a, it was a federal U.S. U.S. Forest Service base in the mountains of Arizona. It was at five thousand feet in a, in a valley. Yeah. So that's yeah. like Denver, Colorado. Yeah. <clears throat> and and the one squad boss, he was a, a Native American. I forget what tribe. And he said, "All right, for the next two weeks straight, we're doing two a days CrossFit workouts." And I'm like, "What's CrossFit? <laughs> <laughs> What's a two a day?" <laughs> and I'm sorry. Did you say two weeks straight? <laughs> No, <laughs> no days off. Cause that was our critical training period. And yeah. Yeah. it was crucial for them to establish not just a physical, but a mental foundation. Yeah, and exactly. that's, that was, and this is, this is 2010. So yeah. obviously the sport, the brand has come very far. You now have, you know, the, the CrossFit games every year on the, on ESPN. Now, do you train at an actual uh, a CrossFit facility? Cause there's only, there's only Cape CrossFit in South Africa. Cause I, I, I worked out with them when I was there. Yeah, uh, there, there are two or three in Cape Town now. Oh, yeah. That's correct. I go to a, a, a gym in Cape Town. That's okay. correct. At District 6, which is a very famous part of Cape Town. And yeah. I might well, just, I wait, must which, boast which, which part? I, I go to District 6, CrossFit District 6, but I must boast a bit more. Okay. I actually did 18, the series for the open testing this year. I did the five days. The Congrats. Five days. And I'm, now, now I'm really going to show up. So I was in my class, 68, I was the seventh in... In I think in South Africa, so I was the seventh best. In, so you, in so you were class. in the, you were registered in the open. Yeah, that's right. That and is awesome. On, if you go on the see, you'll see me doing some stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna go so, find that. Stuff. Well, because the best part was when we were there, uh, we I we dropped in for Cape CrossFit, and then yeah. um, see, I was there in November, so that's like your end of winter, start of that's spring. Good, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 spring out. So they were just literally that weekend. Uh, we got to go out on. Um, we were staying in Cl Clifton. Is that right? Clifton, yeah, that's yeah. correct. And then, if you're coming from Cape Town from the airport, you go through Clifton and then down at the beach. There, we we went and worked out on the beach. So that that CrossFit business, all yes. uh, all of their athletes from the two or three different facilities, they go there on a Saturday and they work out on the yeah. beach. So I, I, I have photos of this. I loved it. It was so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's crazy. I love this. So <laughs> you're 68 years old. You're registered in the CrossFit Open. Um, you're putting on lean muscle. Man, I don't know, Tim. I don't think I know. I don't think you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you should get back uh, yeah. on the. Maybe you should get back on the circuit train. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but I bet you know it's just uh, the beauty of this is that you progress every day. And so today I beat my record for a deadlift. So. I've almost got to my body weight and deadlift. So I'm really very proud of that. And the guy wasn't me pushing me. So I love hearing this because yeah. I, I'm a big advocate, especially for aging. We need to be doing strength training. Now, yeah. granted, you don't need to be trying to deadlift 400 pounds like me. Like my, oh, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't tested mine in a while. My last PR was 375, but, yeah. I'm, but I'm 40. Yeah. So, yeah, and I've been doing it a while. <laughs> 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 so there's there's something different there and uh yeah. hold on ladies and gentlemen probably for the first podcast ever for tim here you are he's not lying <laughs> there you go. oh yeah trust me i told you i'm a crossfitter i know how to find yeah. people you tell me you're in the open i'm gonna find your stats so there you yeah, are there you yeah so uh i was ninth. sorry i thought i was seventh but i, there you I go. see it's nine Okay, darn. Oh, darn. You're, you're top 10. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> so this is great. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
Oh, worldwide, I was 200, uh, 2, 2,392. Yeah. Because so again, this <laughs> to, to Wisconsin. the 60 plus, the 60 plus age demographic, I have two athletes that I've, I used to work with that are in, that went in the open too. This is yeah. what I love seeing. I love seeing the growth, not so much CrossFit. I'm just saying it, yeah. at least the one thing I like about the open is I see that age demographic growing yeah. Yeah. every single year. Like next year, if you do this again, who knows? You might be, you know, out of, I don't know, 5,060 plus or 10,060 plus. This is what I want to see. People need yeah. to be taking care of themselves. No, exactly. So no, good for you. It's because uh, I'm going to be fitter in a year's time than I am today. I know that. So, yes. Well, because your body's you responding. Fitter? Yeah. How can you be fitter at 69 than at 68? So I just feel that the, the aging process is reversed. Whereas when I was just running, I didn't get that. I never got that feeling. I just felt that I was getting older. Can I just make one final point that I had my you make all the points you want. <laughs> yeah. uh, I had my, I, I'm test. I'm part of a trial of people with diabetes who've been on the low carb diet for a period. And I've essentially, my diabetes is finally after seven years, it's in remission. Yes. In other words, it's astonishing. I mean, my, my results are amazing, but they've definitely been improved dramatically since I started this explosive activities. So my glycated hemoglobin, which is kind of the best marker you have of your glucose control, has dropped to 5.2%. And that's, that is so normal that it's frightening. And it used to be close to seven when I started. And seven is profoundly diabetic. Were you still on a pharmaceutical? I am taking metformin, but that metformin by itself will not, metformin will drop you to about eight. And I'm well, at five it's, it's a medical, I mean, am I using the right term? My terminology, I like to use is yeah. pharmaceuticals are just medical band-aids. They're treating a symptom. Yeah. They're not finding the root cause. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And I, if I can just say metformin actually isn't the pharmaceutical product. It is, it's some sort of supplement. It's not really, oh. it wasn't developed. It was discovered. It's a natural product which was discovered, and people don't know that. That so I agree not, with. I know it's not a drug, but yeah, um, it's not really. A but drug. that's the only thing you're on. I do take berberin from. It is also a supplement, but that's it. There's no insulin or anything else. And were you ever I'm on a drug? Oh, sorry. Were you ever on a diabetic no, drug? No, no. Wow. I was always. I always just took metformin, but on the low carb diet, and that, and I've seen this progressive improvement. That's impressive. And why? Why it's improving, I don't know, but I just think the extra five kilograms of muscle and it's fresh, maybe it's fresh muscle, it's more insulin sensitive and it's functioning properly. So it's interesting. So I, 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 my, I take this very personally because my dad is type two diabetic, Yeah. but yeah. he wasn't always Yeah. just like you, right? So my dad okay. is now, he's, he's younger than you. He's, he's early sixties. Yeah. And, but, and no one in my family looks like me, by the way. Yeah. They're yeah. all... Over, they're all overweight. I love them, yeah. but they're all overweight. And yeah. your, your closest friends in your family are the hardest ones to help. Like I exactly. have the knowledge, but I can't make them hear it. Yeah. Now, granted. No, it's, it's so frustrating. Isn't it? Yeah. I like it. So, so last night I was with a guy I was at school with 50 odd years ago. And we were discussing it. And he's on insulin. And I said, you know, Roger, you can't afford to be on insulin because it's making you worse. It's going to more likely make you lose your legs. All you have to do, and he said, I've, he's been hospitalized frequently for hypoglycemia. And they told us because they're not eating enough carbs. So they eat more carbs, they inject more insulin, they get more hypos. I said, no, no, no. And he said, it's such a difficult disease. I said, no, it's easy to manage. I love my diabetes. I'm in love with my diabetes because I can do something about it and, and reduce my risk of developing disease. And I'm not going to arrive at the age of 75 or 80 and say, oh my gosh, if only I'd done this when I was 65, I wouldn't be in such a bad shape today. Well, I don't have that. I'm, I'm not predicting what's going to happen to me in the future, but I'm doing the best I can. And that's, that's all you can do. And at least I'll have no regrets. Whatever happens, I've got no regrets. But if you come to the point where you're told, gosh, you know, you've got type 2 diabetes, you've got diffuse arterial disease, you're going to use your limbs, you're going to you need renal dialysis. And only if, if 10 years ago you changed, you wouldn't have had to do this. That's not going to happen to me. Well, uh, and, uh, and is that the whole, the whole foundation, okay? Everything that you're yeah. doing, that, that's why I really want to get some more of the back behind the scenes about you, which we've definitely brought out on this show today because 
your foundation continues to grow. I'm going to do some screen sharing again because um, I love this quick little hot list on your site under the research and beneficiary section of, again, ladies and gentlemen, the Noakes, N-O-A-K-E-S, foundation.org. Please check it out. I love what they're doing in South Africa. But your points here, right? We seek to answer the following questions. How do we correct the dietary errors of the past 50 years? I could stop right there, like that very first point. Um, I mean, how long has your foundation been going on now? Oh, it came with the book. Once we'd written okay. the book and it sold 250,000 copies, we suddenly had 2 million rand. I was, you know, from the book sales. Real quick, ladies and, and gentlemen, the rand is their money over there. FYI, yeah, my US sorry. dollar is worth so much more over it's there. It's about the 11 rand. to 1. It's 11 rand to $1. So it's not, <laughs> it's not a huge amount of money, but in South Africa, it goes a long way. It does. And I didn't want to pay tax on it. So I said, well, let's form a foundation and invest that money in the foundation, which we've done. And then we've raised to, from a couple of people in America who've been incredibly supportive. They've given us money to do some of the work that we want to do. So the altruists in the US, I want to thank them for helping what we're doing. And so that's kept us going for the last two or three years and, and trying to address these questions that you see before you. Well, and then and I'm just clicking forward. I love the fact you guys aren't hiding anything. The site is beautiful. Uh, the content you have on here, you're answering the questions. You're, you're, you're not hiding anything. You're putting it all out there. Um, and the exciting thing is if you guys continue to keep moving this forward and making an impact there, has there ever been discussions about how this could possibly ex, you know, expand internationally or into other like, for example, heck, back here to the U.S., we, yeah. we, th we think we know everything. We don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Now, you've got to say, well, you, we, you exported your problems to us with your grain. Trust me. I know. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, stop it. We, every other country loves our fast food. That, stop it. We are not <laughs> setting a good example. That's right. That's right. So we're doing two things. What we realized in South Africa is that we have to educate the doctors because every doctor who's converted can convert 10 or 15,000 people. So we just launched the Nutrition Network, which is the first in the world, Ooh. where you can register, go through your training and get some sort of certificate. And then you'd be totally competent to prescribe the low-carb diet to your patients. And we're not just focusing on diabetes, we're focusing on all other conditions as well. So we hope one day to become a university. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that would university. be an amazing legacy, my friend. Yeah. For everything that you have gone through, that would be a powerful legacy that could come out of that. Yeah, no, thank you very much. I mean, so, so, so you are, you're calling it the Nutrition Network? That's correct, yeah. Okay. And so that launches on May the 1st. And we've already got 300 signups. And, you know, I was chatting to a colleague, South African colleague who's working in Geneva, and he's very involved with a major insurance company overseas. And he said, that's amazing because what's happening in this country is patients are coming to the doctors and saying, listen, I've been on this low carb diet and I've benefited more than I ever benefited from all your medications. And the doctors are suddenly saying, oops, maybe we got it wrong. And they are coming to us and saying they want education, which is it's not happening anywhere else in the world as far as I know. The doctors are realizing because there's so much pressure on them to prescribe the low carb diet that that's what's happening. So that's, that's the one component. That, that's the one nutrition networks, the one component. The other big drive this year is the Eat Better South Africa campaign. And I think you'll see it somewhere else. And that's, we've discovered that the food are in the, for the poorest communities is obviously the worst. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to prove that. That happens here too. I, I think yeah. it's, this is an international problem. Absolutely. There's a lovely story from East Los Angeles showing exactly the same. So the, the analogy for the poorer communities in Cape Town and East Los Angeles, it's exactly the same. The communities are, are very, very similar. They sugar intoxicated. And we showed that if you take the sugar out and you replace the carbohydrates, the refined carbohydrates with protein and fat, they start to get better and they start to reverse their diabetes and the hypertension and feel better and take control. And we've had enormous success. And what's more exciting is that the people we converted, we went back and two years later without any further follow-up are still eating the diet and still benefiting. So we've got in the process a major intervention. We've got 200, we want to put 200 people on a, on a randomized controlled trial, give them decent food, as you can see in front of you there. 
mm-hmm. and see how they can convert their, their health as a consequence of changing their diet. And these are the poorest of the poor. And we've worked out that on $2 a day, you can eat this banting or low carb diet. Wow. Which is astonishing. So two, they two dollars US or two dollars Rand or two dollars US. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's it's, amazing. It is. It is. And and the communities, because they're communities, they're still communities, they work together and they can get it, they can get food at at reduced prices. And so we're we're very excited. There are some of the programs that you're showing now. That's yeah. one of the interventions, and some of those ladies there that we introduced the program to them and they benefited hugely. And this is some of the, this was afterwards at, this is the sort of food that we encourage them to eat. No, I mean, I was going to say, I mean, these, and, and so this, is, this was a group from Ocean View in Cape Town. Wow. They joined our program and they, they'd all been working out in a gym in the, in their community. So they've been going to the gym for years, but they'd never had any benefits from in terms of their health. They hadn't reversed their diabetes, their blood pressure. They're still getting using medications. And we showed them that once they correct their sugar intake and they reduce their refined carbohydrate intake, they start to get better and they can reduce their medications. And that's huge for them because now they don't have to spend a whole day in the hospital once a month collecting medications. And they call it their party pack. They said, I've, used, eat, I've been taking this party pack from the hospital. Whoa, whoa. They call, uh, they call a groupings of drugs and medications their party pack? That's what they call them. Oh. And the party pack doesn't work. It doesn't reverse their diabetes. It doesn't reverse their hypertension. The, no, this, this spread of food, that's a party pack to me, man. I'm, I'm sharing, all, again, ladies and gentlemen, Every once in a while, I, I, I always embed the YouTube, actually all, every episode, we embed the YouTube feed into the blog post for livethefuel.com because I, I'm showing some amazing, oh my God, the smoked salmon, yes, like <laughs> cheese and, and butter. I mean, these photos, whoever your photographer was, was great. Um, and this, this by is, the way, these are, these are low-carb banting. We call them banting in South Africa. It's the banting diet. Okay. So those, yes, those actually. Are, those are low-carb without, gra- without any wheat in them. And this is actually linked to your banting. This is the chart from the book, right? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, so again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm showing, um, he, earlier in the episode, he talked about the whole green, orange, red, like their color chart. Um, and I'm showing that actually on here now. You guys can actually find this at the real, the real meal, uh, revolution.com as well. And uh, uh, your, your support system is amazing. I mean, you guys have not held back at all. You're putting, every, <laughs> you're putting everything out there. It's amazing. Yeah, no, that's right. And that's one of the things about the research we do. We don't hide anything and we publish the results and we will make the results available. So now the raw data will be available so that no one can come to us and say, but you, you hid the data or you mis- misinterpreted the data or something. We completely transparent. And if we find that the diet doesn't work, that's fine. We will report it. You know? yeah. But, yeah. And because we're here to make progress, not to, to sell a product. We're not selling any products. Uh, I'm loving this. And, and sorry, real quick, I just realized that Tom, we're going a little bit over. I want to respect your schedule. Are you okay for a couple of minutes here? Or? Carry on, please. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I mean, it's just, we, we've, <laughs> this is the one <laughs> downfall of having screen sharing and video. It's like, there's so much I want to share for you because there's so much you've done and are still doing. <laughs> and it's, it's like, just be, ladies and gentlemen, just because he's in South Africa, every single thing that I'm going to put on the website the, the, the color-coded meal charts and the, the information about the nutrition network, like I'm jealous. I wish I was a doctor. I'm like, I want to get certified in your nutrition network. I mean, <laughs> because <laughs> there's dietitians and nutritionists in this country who don't have a clue. They're being yeah. taught yeah. what's being taught in the university, which is still tied back to our sad diet, the standard American diet, which is still archaic and incorrect, which was... I forget when they even put that in 20, 30, 40 years ago. Wrong. I mean, I grew up on a farm. So oh, I've, exactly. I've, I've gone back to my childhood. It was, yeah. I used to, I used to milk, uh, we had Nubian goats. I used to milk the goats, run it through a coffee filter. And I just drank that stuff raw, man. I mean, yeah. I, I had my own chicken coop. I actually, my first business was selling eggs on the side of the road. I used to sell <laughs> eggs for, for a dollar us per dozen. Um, my, my dad brought us up, right. He taught us to work hard. I shoveled a lot of manure in my day, uh, <laughs> but I figured you'd appreciate that because 
yeah. it's getting back to the basics here. Exactly. Well, I was, I was born in Harare, Zimbabwe, and that, they didn't have processed food in those days. No. And my parents came from the north of England, and they ate food directly from the farm. So that's how they brought me up as well. I'm just going to reshare this again because everything that Tim and I are talking about right now, the green zone, uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm showing the chart. Hello, green leafy vegetables. That's whole food. Uh, avocados. That's whole food. I'm just popping out. I love celery, uh, fennel, garlic. I mean, fat sources, you got butter, coconut oil, avocado oil. Um, I've actually learned that I think either from you or somebody else that I, I'm obsessed with the, Vinny and I are friends with Villa Capelli guys out of Italy for olive oil, yes. but I heard that coconut oil actually has a much even better um, heat sustainability, I guess, for example, yeah, uh, for cooking. Correct. Yeah. And I, I actually, I have ghee in the cabinet right now, ladies and gentlemen, that's again, animal fats, butter. It's just, this is, fat will not kill you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not. <laughs> There's different worlds of fat. This is healthy, consumable fats. Fat is energy. Actually, I, I think we need to rebrand that. We got to find a way, everything you're doing, Benny doing, I'm doing, we're, we got to retrain people like, like, like yeah. uh, Nina, Nina Ty Schultz has done with her book, right? Uh, is fats should equal energy. Yeah. But everybody sees yeah. fats and they think fats are fatty. Yeah. It's frustrating. That's very good. Yeah, very good point. Yeah. Have you ever, um, have you ever heard of uh, Dr. Sylvia Tara? How do you spell the name? Uh, Sylvia Tara, T-A-R-A. -A. No, I haven't. No. She's the author, I had her on the podcast last year, The Secret Life of Fat. So mm. she's like years of biology research. She, she became so obsessed with her own uh, weight fluctuation that she just went into like 20 years of studying fat cells. <laughs> so. I think... I'm just looking at my books above me here. And that might be one of the books I've bought but never read. So, <laughs> Oh, well. Looks that, like time I need to get down and read it. Let's be real. Uh, thanks to this podcast, I can barely keep up with the books because of people like you who are writing amazing books and you're trying to read all of them. And it's like, oh, dear Lord, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've cheated a little bit and that's why I'm obsessed with Audible. Uh, are, oh, by the way, are any of your books done in audio? You know, we're trying to get the law of nutrition into onto audio, but the Please. publishers at the moment won't help us. Yeah. Okay. And actually, here. So we're going to we're going to sit down and do it. Yeah. Is you ever see there? That's her book. Yes, I'm so, convinced I've got it. I'm sure. Yeah. So the science behind the body's least understood yeah. organ. She that was one thing I learned from her. She's like Scott. Fat cells are an organ, and she's like yeah. that was one of the most mind blowing takeaways that I got from her. So. Um, and she has it in audio because that's how I was able to, I have a physical and the audio, but I consume the audio faster. <laughs> right, right. I love how you're looking around because I see a giant bookcase behind you and I'm guessing there's yeah, another there, bookcase above you. There's one right in front of me. This is where I keep, <laughs> keep all the books and it's just full of, these are all the books I've read in the last six years about nutrition. And well, I it, know I've got that book, but I can't see it. Yeah. Well, I, so, I, 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 th I, th I think someone like you who's done all the research you've done would probably really geek out uh, on, yeah. on her research. So, I'm writing it down. Yeah. So, so we, we've talked a lot about cutting the, cutting the sugar, increasing the healthy fats. Um, I love the fact we got to dig, dig into the real meal revolution. Your color-coded chart, I think, really cuts it down to the simplicity. Like, Honestly, ladies and gentlemen, just get the chart. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> is that only available through the book, or do you guys have that as like, like somebody could like download that or buy that as, as like just like a downloadable chart and they could have it printed? Or have you ever thought about that? I'm sure it's on the Real Meal Revolution website. Okay, and it's probably somewhere on the Nokes Foundation. We also read another book called The Banting Pocket Guide, and it's got the whole story in that as well. Oh. Bant banting pocket guide that tells you how to start the bant banting low carb diet and it's got that's got even more extensive because it also gives the calorie counts for each of those foods which is which is also a nice interesting addition i'll be honest doc i've never counted a calorie in my life yeah. <laughs> but that's for people who want to count calories <laughs> yes yeah I, I i see i think that's really important ladies and gentlemen i think the takeaway he just gave you a secret here is we need to meet people where they are at. Yeah. And yeah. if people are still hardcore into the calorie counting because of magazines and just past, 
you know, past attempts that they've done to get healthy, then fine. If you want to count some calories, we'll, we'll give you the calorie numbers. But the sooner you get, get away, like I, I've never counted a calorie because I'm eating good, whole, you know, nutrient uh, dense food. Exactly. I had a big exactly. fat steak last night. Food. I'm actually going to bring up the Banting pocket guide too. Um, Cause I did not share that one yet. No, oh, you, you didn't do law of nutrition either. Yeah. You have, you have too many books, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, that's why I'm like, I'm, are all these books are supported by the Noakes foundation, right? Well, they, yeah, we we that the money from those books comes to the Noakes Foundation, or at least part of it. Good. The my contribution to it comes to the Noakes Foundation. Okay, I just want to make sure because that's why I was like, you know what? Because you have such a, a literally a small library of volumes. Um, mm -hmm. I get just just an idea. It's my marketing brain. I'm like, maybe whoever does your Noakes Foundation, I don't know if they ever thought about just linking, like, hey, here's the quick library mm -hmm. on all the supportive books that we've created, or you know, are looking to support or expand on. So, uh, because I've done that, there it is. Lower of nutrition, lower of nutrition. There we go. So, uh, because I think people need to understand that there's the tools are there. Yeah. <laughs> you, exactly. you got, you guys have put the tools out there. If, if you need to read it first before you can use it, then great. For example, here you go. There's the notes foundation, the Banting pocket guide. And, then, oh, and that's, that's an amazing introduction. It's, it's got all you need and it's cheap, as you can see. It's $7. cheap, yeah. It's Barnes and Noble, it's less than, ladies and gentlemen, it's less than $8 US. I mean, seriously. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's barely any skin in the game. <laughs> and a percentage of these sales goes to benefit your foundation. Correct. And is that the same thing with the law of nutrition? Yeah, it's, it's uh, obviously there are two authors, so half of the royalties go to... Oh, that's understandable. Go to the Noakes Foundation. And this, well, is, this is a book about the story of my last seven years since I changed my ideas. And it's got the whole story of the trial. So it's, and it reads like a thriller. You won't put it down. Once you start, you won't put it down. Well, and I can tell you, I actually already have this book. So Fantastic. I think it's funny though, that for some reason, Amazon's got the paper book listed for $900. I don't, <laughs> I think somebody, somebody at Amazon messed up. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that expensive. Um, yes, right. oh, oh, because somebody is selling it used. That's why the, the new version is not available on this, this one link that I brought up. But uh, <laughs> so the law of nutrition, I actually have it. And uh, I promise it's hard for me to sit down because I travel so much. So it takes me longer to physically read a book. Whereas yes. when I'm traveling, I just listen to the audio. So I'll be very excited. If you, if you guys start re-releasing all this stuff in audio, I will yeah. be buying those too. So okay, I have a very large audible library. And, I'm, and that's something else I'm doing. I'm actually going to make sure I'll put this in for my VA, but I've been building out on my, on livethefuel.com. I have a fuel library. It's kind mm -hmm. of like a best practice I learned from Vinny. Like he puts all of his recommended books on his site. I'm doing the same thing. The sooner we can get out every, I, I haven't written a book yet. I don't need yeah. to. You, you guys have already done all the hard work. I just need to share all these yeah. amazing books yeah. and say, Hey guys, here you go. Healthy lifestyle. Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so what's next? What, what do you got? What you got going on next? I mean, the courts have been a hell of an adventure for you. Yeah. Uh, obviously we're, people need to get the law of nutrition to hear that past uh, your own lifestyle transition. I, is the rest of 18 looking better? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I'm just waiting to calm down and rest and then I'll start decide what to do next. I've got yeah, a lot of options. A lot of writing options, and I just want to know where I can make the biggest impact. Oh, I love it. And, and you've been, well, let, let's refresh for listeners real quick. We're recording this here in April 2018. How long have you been, I'll do air quotes, out of court? Like, done, oh, like uh, a year, basically. Okay. A year. Yeah, and you've needed and at least a year just to recover. Rest. Yeah, we slept at the ruling, as, as you indicated. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> That's been such a hell of a journey for you. I mean, yeah, I, 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 Nina uh, obviously is a, a, a powerful person in your corner. Um, yeah. I, 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 have, have you been hearing about uh, Vinny's project? No, I haven't. Oh, he wants. Oh, he hasn't reached out to you yet. Not yet. Oh, he's already let it slip on the recent couple of podcasts. Um, yeah. 
he wants to, you know how he's always saying he, he can't convince vegan doctors to come on his podcast. Yes. So I know if no, nothing against veganism, right? It's your lifestyle, yeah, sure. but he's like, I want to create a documentary movie with both sides of the fence, all the doctors, yeah. like all of his recommended people like yourself sitting there. And then the ones that are on the opposite side of the fence there. And like, listen, let's just have a healthy conversation and talk about the truth behind these different lifestyle choices. So people really understand maybe what they are missing going vegan versus not. And he's not, he's like, I'm not going to cr criticize him. I just want truth on, yeah, on a like stage that. or something. So uh, he and I are going to try and touch base today because I told him like, listen, I will volunteer to help you guys. Uh, they want to do like a crowdfunding thing to say, Hey, yeah. If people really want this, let's see if we can raise enough money to kickstart a documentary movie or whatever he's trying to create. So I'm going to talk to him about it today. Fantastic. It's amazing. Because again, he's just, that's just one more tool for like you guys could use for your foundation, right? Is getting the yeah. truth out there. Exactly. So, exactly. This has been amazing. Well, listen, this has been a powerful podcast. I want to make sure I, I respect your day and let you get back to all the good work you've been doing in your family. Um, something a common that I do for all of our co-hosts is you've already yeah. shared so much. <laughs> yeah. Is there an all encompassing message that you moving forward want to leave behind to our audience saying, listen, this is what Tim Noakes and his foundation, this is our mission. So whatever. Is there something that you want to make sure if they forget everything else we talked about today, like this is something that they do remember about you and your foundation and what you're doing. Yeah. I think we want to change the idea of what's healthy food. And we want to start bottom up, right from the poorest people, because they're the ones who are really suffering. And we know in South Africa, we can't reverse the decline of the health of this country until we address the food, how it's provided, and particularly how it's provided to the poorest people. And that really is our focus. You know, people have got choices and they can afford to eat a good diet and they choose not to, that's fine. But the poorest people in this country have no choice. They, they've got no access to good food. And they've got no education about what good food is. And we're trying to change that. Wow. I love it. Well, listen, Hank Taylor, I want to give you a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, I, this is probably one of the most powerful podcast episodes I've been trying to get on the air for you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening in. Remember, check them out at the noakesfoundation.org. Pretty much everything they're doing is, is like, that's like the headquarter website. <laughs> we, I will link every single book we've talked about on, on the website for you guys on the blog article content. Go check this out on YouTube, on the video. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a proper goodbye to Tim here in a second when we get off the air. But again, thanks for tuning in. Remember, we talk about it all the time health, business, and lifestyle. We're just trying to fuel your balance and improve your lives. And remember, you too can live the fuel. We'll talk to you guys again soon. And Thanks you're so clear of the pot. What's I'm that? Just the I'll be right back. Oh, yeah. Okay, wait a second. So again, for our video watchers, such a powerful show. Um, the, the, again, for freeing up time, trying to make it work across continents, across oceans. Uh, the Noakes Foundation, man, they're making it happen in South Africa. I think it's powerful that if they can impact the low income and uh, the, the less fortunate, obviously, people who are struggling with their lifestyles, if they can set the example at that level, I mean, imagine what you can do with the proper income and the proper finances. So it's like the fact that they're starting from the grassroots, from the, from the bottom and working their way up. I think that's powerful. It's amazing. And this is just something I love about podcasting. This is amazing. I mean, just, I love the fact I was just saying, um, I, I leave the video yeah. run a little bit yeah. just for some extra truth. And I was just saying like, I just love the fact that you guys are going from the grassroots, man, like starting from the bottom, yeah. working your way up because if we can positively shift and impact the low income demographic and get yeah. them healthy. There's no excuse for the people who have the income. That's right. Exactly right. right. Yeah. yeah. So I hope you had fun today. I loved it. I really enjoyed it. Fantastic. Thanks yeah. for being. So I, I, I hope I honored your foundation. You did. You did a fantastic job. Thank you so much. All right, I've it's tried. been a great pleasure and a privilege. Well, and again, congrats to your wife. That's exciting. Yeah. And uh, you'll have to, send me a photograph or something. Do you guys have that up on, I don't know, social media, Facebook? I, I don't can know. Send you the, 
I can send you the painting. Yeah, I'll send you the pictures of the painting. Yeah, because I want to share that. Is that a current where what the garden looks like now? That piece? Oh, or? The garden? Yeah, this this was the her painting is of one bulb, which oh. is an endangered it's an endangered species in in the Western Cape. Oh wow. Yeah, and so we go to the reserve where it's grown and she has to photograph because it's only up for seven days and then it's gone. The plant, it's only ever, the, the flower's only ever up for seven days and then it's gone. Wow. So she's got seven days to photograph it and to get down painted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, uh, yeah, hopefully your timeline's aligned, I guess, and that's it. So. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's, uh, that's powerful. Well, like I said, my, like I said, my fiance and I were just there for the first time in November and we loved Cape Town. We loved uh, the French Shook wine valleys yes, and yeah, that's uh, beautiful, isn't it? And the safari. It was just it was amazing. Great. And, and I'm glad you guys are finally getting some rain. It's much needed. Yeah. yeah, it's looking like it's raining quite nicely now. Oh, it's wonderful. Well, thank you again. And and listen, if uh, especially I'm gonna go extend it. I'm sure even on Vinny's show multiple times. I'm happy like we did here to make this schedule alignment thing work. Yeah. If you want to get another, get more podcasts out there when you are doing um, the, la uh, the launch for, because we did plug it a little bit on this episode, but yeah, the nutrition network, that's, I'm happy. Please, you have an invite always open to come back and do Thank anything we much. can do to grow more online awareness behind yeah. everything you guys are doing. Thank you so much, Scott. I will take you up on that. Absolutely, sir. Well, I'll let you get back to your day. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Right. Really appreciate it. Loved it. Thanks, Absolutely. Scott. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye.